Mark, this is the project we've been working on together, delivering trackless trams. And we're at the phase now of seeing how we actually deliver it in, on the ground. And that involves partnerships. Now you've had a real breakthrough in terms of getting some funding to get this moving, which we're very, all very grateful for because it, it has been a breakthrough politically mm. to get that federal money. So perhaps you could start by saying how you have done this stage of the delivery, which is getting federal and state government to support you yep. to some degree on this. Look, I think it's fair to say the research, that obviously, that yourself has done with, um, with your alliance um, in the background has been certainly very helpful. Um, for us, it was about timing. The, the Stirling City Centre has been something that's been on um, City of Stirling's agenda for decades, and we've made it very clear that's our number one priority. So over the last few years, receiving the funding for Stevenson Avenue, which is the main connection road going through that, there was funding from state government and federal government, which is the ideal scenario for a local government to be delivering a project with all levels of government, um, starts to get that buy-in and builds that relationship. That's been the catalyst. Um, by actually having the money and then starting that project, we were able to leverage off that. So we continued our lobbying efforts with federal government. Obviously through an election cycle, uh, we had new federal members coming in. Uh, they were certainly really interested to hear the projects on the ground. It's an exciting project and it's what's hard is for a federal government, I think, to get hold of real groundbreaking um, Australia building sort of projects. And we're seeing a, a process now where federal governments tend to fund uh, small lighting scale projects for ovals, um, building projects for small club rooms and roundabouts. Uh, we reminded them of their role in building funding pro or funding projects that are going to change the way we do business in Australia. Uh, you know, ever since I became mayor I he heard about light rail and pr prior to that when I first moved into my house in Double View, I had my land ceded, um, I had to sign the document I remember when I bought my house in 1995 and it talked about light rail. So I was aware of the project. But if, again, if you look at the timing by having Stirling City Centre with Stevenson Avenue going through, um, having Glendalow train station at one end and then having that $150 million investment into the Scarborough foreshore, it just created a really ideal strip where we could really look at how we could change things and deliver what we wanted, which is a development uplift. Mm. So you, you, you were able to talk to the federal government and state government about the, the importance of this in terms of urban development, not just transport. Yeah, and I think a couple of other projects that were going on around Australia at the time, uh, which again helped our case, was the fact there was a real light rail project going on in Sydney, which as we all know, went well over budget and well over time and caused incredible disruption, uh, which is one of our selling points for trackless tram. Uh, the other one was we visited the one in Canberra and it was so successful in a light rail project that even as they were building it, the development along that corridor was happening, and which is one of the outcomes they were looking for. Um, again, City of Stirling is well above a lot of the local governments in their planning framework. So we've been looking at activity corridors and how we can increase density along those corridors for quite a while now and all the planning is in place. And that was certainly helpful. So for us to go to the federal government and look at that corridor and suggest that this wasn't just about transport, this is about getting development uplift and achieving all those state government targets. Uh, the next stage for us was to working out a way to de-risk it for both of us. Because it is something that hasn't happened in Australia, that's been our biggest barrier when we talk about it to any level of government, is how do we know this can work? Um, and the simple answer from us has been, well, if no one ever tries it, we're not going to know that. So how about we do a full business case Let's just de-risk it and make sure that everything we've heard to date stacks up and then hopefully we can get the rest of the money and, uh, and get on with it. Very good. So the next phase, if you get some money for the trackless tram vehicles, and that's happening across Perth as well with the other councils, yep. the next phase to actually make it work would be to involve the private sector and the communities who would be involved in the places that surround the stations. Yep. Um, this is a different model, isn't it, to Metronet, to main roads, to PTA in general. 
Um, how, how do you think you'll manage that process? Because you've Sterling's been a leader in how to get this idea of the trackless tram there, mm. but to actually deliver it now, that's that's quite something again. You, and there's, you can't just hand it over, can you? I mean, this, this is a new process. Maybe you could outline the kind of way you think you would involve the private sector and the community in this process. Well, and that's a challenge, isn't it, going forward? I think the key is if we look at the current transport that we have, the Public Transport Authority run the buses, so they're not necessarily looking to run something else like a light rail system. Uh, the state government's heavily invested in Metronet and making sure they deliver their rail system. So to look at this specific corridor and look at the opportunities that it presents um, in terms of private partnership is exciting for us, but it's probably the biggest challenge because the barrier has always been for any level of government is to work with private sector, with developers, uh, with investors. It, there's no real model for that yet. Um, is there an opportunity for that? I think this would be an ideal opportunity to look at that. Uh, you know, we often see private investment and private development do things at a fraction of the cost that government agencies can do. Um, this particular corridor has major developments at both ends, which could quite easily link in with this and would be a great way to get private investment uh, and get a real development uplift there as well. I think one of the keys with this, it's been talked about so much in the City of Stirling as part of the Stirling City Centre second stage of the project that we're seeing the development uplift along that corridor now. So it feels to me like the planning framework's in place, the story's there, uh, the development now is happening along that corridor in anticipation. So I feel like we have an obligation to pursue it. So it's already happening. Yeah, that's, that's what does occur and you'll need to involve them if they're going to make their developments fit in with the project proposals which will come forward. And that whole process is usually a very top-down one. It yeah. comes down and your station's going to be there and this is going to go from A to B as fast as possible. But it doesn't develop the places around the stations. That process is a whole new dimension that we need to re well discover in Perth, I would think. But also across Australia, I don't think there's a model yet for how to do that. No, and I'm not sure either. Certainly the planning framework that we've put in place from Scarborough through to Glendalow uh, allows, allows for the development, allows for stations and allows for road widening, etc. for all that to happen. But one thing we do know with the developments that are currently happening through our, our major centres is that developers tend to get it better than we do in terms of how to engage because the benefit for them, if they're going to invest in these areas, is to make sure they've got the patronage, make sure they've got people at their front door. And there's no better way, I would suggest, than a trackless tram stop outside your front door to do that. Mm. It de-risks the project to fully involve the community and get them to see and uh, what it is that they want that can be incorporated into a development. And that, that, yeah, most engineers in the agencies haven't got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's too busy getting it out and getting the ribbon cut. So. That, that is a process that we need to take time to do, but if we don't do that, it'll make the project more difficult later and take time. <laughs> so that's a theme that we're certainly coming up with a lot. Maybe you could quickly tell us a bit about the Scarborough end, yeah. the Sid Sterling end and the Glendalow end. Just three projects really that yeah. will make Stirling a different place. How do you imagine that in the next 10 years? Well, I guess, it, so if we start at Scarborough, you know, most people would be familiar by now with the, the major redevelopment down there. Uh, it's been phenomenal in attracting people back to that environment. We see on one night, on a, a weeknight, up to 10,000 people there enjoying markets. Uh, businesses are thriving down there. Uh, it's, it's a place where people want to go. The challenges are traffic. And the, the obvious question people ask is, can we have more car parking? That's never the intent when you build an area like that. It's about people, not about cars. So even if we look at that end and then have the major highway, West Coast Highway that goes through, the last thing we want to do is drive more cars or vehicles onto that side of West Coast Highway. So having major development on the corners, um, to hopefully to proceed over the next few years, 
creates an incredible opportunity, for example, to have a trackless tram stop where the transport system doesn't have to go right into the heart of Scarborough. But imagine if it stopped this side of West Coast Highway and everyone had to go through those developments, um, you know, it's, and think innovatively about how we do that with overpasses and, um, you know, more amenity for the people as they walk through. I think there's some really good opportunities there. And again, if we get private investment to look at how they could um, perhaps provide those stops, you know, I guarantee they'd um, be a lot more innovative and creative and a lot better than if government did it. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, a few hundred metres either side of a tram stop yep. ought to be the responsibility of the developer yep. to make that system work because that's the most important in terms of how they can really t uh, capture the value that is created by the trackless tram yep. rather than the time savings. Mm. It's about the place being created and they're very good at that. That's their profession. It's not government's profession. We're also lucky with this route because as it travels away from Scarborough, it goes through several local centres, uh, small shopping ones uh, up through Double View on the hilltop there. But then it goes right through the middle. It's a Westfield um, shopping centre. Uh, that whole precinct there is hundreds of shops, uh, big cinema complexes. Obviously, the development hasn't gone ahead currently, but at some stage in the future, that site would be earmarked for a fairly major redevelopment, you would think. And to have something like a trackless tram going through a major shopping precinct, again, presents the same sort of opportunities. And then it goes through the business district of Osborne Park, which is part of the new Herzman Glendalough planning framework that's been put in place, um, hoping for some incredible development uplift there. And we've already had meetings with many developers who are looking for significant development opportunities. The investment's already coming through um, in the hope that those roads are going to be opened up and that the trackless tram is going to transport people through. Uh, the framework actually allows for less park, car parking bays in all those buildings on the reliance that this trackless tram is going to go through that area. And then it's going to end up at Glendalough train station. And again, there's major development opportunities just shy of that train centre. So it won't be just a, an interchange like the Metronet interchanges at the moment. Uh, it will be a place in its own right. Yeah, mm. yeah I'd like to think these developments, um, the potential of having something like trackless tram stopping at your doorstep gives them the opportunity to be incredibly innovative in what those developments could be. Mm. The other uh, part of this story is how it then connects through to the rest of the city. Mm. Obviously the first stage is going to be yours, you've earned the right for that, but if it goes under the freeway and continues through Leaderville and then the city yep. uh, and then out through Curtin mm. and Canning, yep. Uh, as a first stage. It also goes the other way. Yep. So people can come back that way and through to the beach. So it will be much more effective if it does that. How, how then can you imagine the consortium working to produce this? Is this something that uh, Sterling still sees a, a role in, that, that you would want to see this extended through? Yeah, and I think the strength of um, Australia I think the strength of the business case right the way through with levels of government has been the fact that local governments are on board with this right through the areas you've talked about and again you've been a conduit for that and I think that's a key role that you'll continue to play in this is making sure that the local governments are aligned with their vision. Um, having staged processes as well is you know it's not about necessarily being the first it's being part of something bigger and and one of the biggest selling points we've talked about for this is if we can show that this can work at a tenth of the cost or a fraction of the cost of a light rail project, without that disruption we see that, that kills businesses and really causes that disruption within the community, then this is something that hopefully can be rolled out as best practice, not only throughout our own local governments in Western Australia, but around Australia. Around Australia and the world. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. interesting, you, you, you've seen the uh, coverage we're getting in New York saying, yeah. Well, when they show it in Perth, we'll have a look at it and probably do it here. Yeah, have a crack. Yeah. yeah, that's a change, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is. And, th you know, we've talked about for years now um, about activity corridors. Now, activity corridors is something that planners talk about and, and put strategic frameworks around it. How are we ever going to know if an activity corridor in our environment is successful if we don't have the transport through that activity corridor? Mm. There's no point in us building an activity corridor like Scarborough and it not working and then keep continue to build them down Wanneroo Road and um, you know Beaufort Street or any of those other corridors even within our own local government. Uh, we need the transport solution there as part of it. 
Yeah, there's lots of other routes that you can see really do lend themselves to this. Yep. Wanna River Road's a good one, but yep. uh, Beaufort Street out to Morley, yep. and of course the Fremantle through to Melville one, which is well developed also yep. as a concept. So I, I think that if we can get a package together that shows that all of these can be staged and delivered uh, once we've got the Stirling one up and running, then we've really got a project that yeah. can set up the city for its next 50 years. Yeah. And I think, you know, again, going back to that opportunity for private investment, if, if there is a way to work out how to jump that barrier, um, you know, if anyone is going to see the success of a trackless tram project in Stirling and want to start to develop it, um, and remodel it and scale it through other local governments, it'll be private investment will um, certainly be a good driver for that. Mm. We're going to have an interview with uh, Adrian Finney yep. to try and get his perspective from a developer's point of view yep. on how you would do that. Yep. And uh, we've had some bottom up stories from other groups. Um, I think everyone's facing in the same direction. Mm. We need the mechanism though. So. Um, I'm really pleased to hear that you are on that track and can see the need for it. You can see the temptation and the engineers in the place will all want it to just build it quick as you can, you know. But there's a process here that can produce an outcome that will be a lot quicker in the end, but a lot better. You'll yeah. have places emerge. Yeah. And I'm glad you're talking to Adrian Finney because he's a great example of a developer who's you know built Quest over here. Talk about going in early and backing a planning framework. That's exactly what he's done um, in terms of the Stirling City Centre. Mm. And he'd be well aware of those requirements when he had to build that building in terms of less car parks because it's got to be access to public transport, um, shared vehicles, those sort of things. So I think it's really important to get the developer point of view. Look, this, this has potential to be absolutely fantastic, mm. um, but it's about getting it right as well. You know, we've got to make sure that we don't deliver a project, and you're well aware of this, where the public turn around and say, well, what is it? Is it just another mode of transport? You know, mm -hmm. It's got to have those priority through lights. It's got to be reliable. It's, it's got to be innovative. It's, it's got to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be something people want to, I think you told me this uh, when I first heard about trackless trams. It's got to be something when people move into their apartments along Scar Beach Road, they sell their second car. They've got to trust it that much. And, that, and that's when it's going to be successful. Very good. So in the end, when that's running, you can imagine how it would then give rise to Stirling City yep. because you can then do a diversion from it there and that would bring to life the investment that's needed to get Stirling City going. Yep. So is that the way you see it? That's a kind of stage down the track. It's not the first stage, but yep. it, it, it will build on that momentum you create. Yeah, well, so we've always seen that this is a stage process. You know, Stevenson Avenue, get the road network through there. Uh, the light rail project, uh, deliver on our promise that there's going to be better transport solutions. But then to work out how that can continue to invigorate the area with the development uplift. I think the developers are waiting in anticipation. The, the lands are cl cleared over here. There's, there's so many opportunities for that to happen. Uh, we've already got money on the budget to start the real planning for what Stirling City Centre needs for the future in terms of its other infrastructure. Do we need another hospital? Do we need a school there? Um, do we need emergency services? Uh, do we need a performing arts centre or a wave park? Uh, those sort of things. Yeah. Stuff to make it really special. Yeah, but uh, the, the core first step is that trackless tram. Yeah. You can see how that will unlock so many things. Yes. And uh, I'm so pleased that we've got to this point where a lot of people can now see that. So yeah. let's hope we can deliver it. Yeah, so we've got the, um, we're very aware that the Prime Minister is coming over here in July. It's been um, in the media that he's coming over with the whole of the Cabinet. Um, many of them have seen our presentation uh, on trackless trams. There's a lot of support from the Federal Government uh, to provide the funding for this. So it really is about getting that business case done, um, understanding the risks involved, and then trying to get the rest of that funding so we can get on and build Australia. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> Very good.